Hi, I'm Craig and welcome to Mark Power. In this video, we're going to talk about the choices that led to some Pokemon being included in Pokemon Sword and Shield and some Pokemon being left out using economics. Probably the biggest controversy surrounding the release of Pokemon Sword and Shield has been the lack of a national dex. Now, no Pokemon game includes every single Pokemon, but historically when you completed the game you had the opportunity to bring in Pokemon from past versions, and that option has been removed in Pokemon Sword and Shield. In this video what I want to talk about is how we can use economics to try and figure out what decision process was going on to include different Pokemon because economics is fundamentally about how people make choices and the incentives and constraints that they have when they're making those choices. I collected a bunch of data on Pokemon and we're going to use statistics and economics to try and figure out what that decision making process was. So let's go ahead and head to my office. He's a young Pokemon researcher who knows even more than me. See what you can learn from him. So here I am in my office to do the analysis on the data that I've collected. And let's think about what the decision they said they made was and how we can test that. Because that's what economists like to do. Economists like to say what kind of decisions are they making, what are the constraints they face, how can we test those decisions that they're making. So. The three things that came up when Junichi Masuda announced that there wasn't going to be a national dex were first, the battle system, making sure things were balanced. Second, they wanted high fidelity animations to make sure that there was some sort of quality there. And then third, they mentioned that there were still going to be a lot of favorites that people would enjoy. This will be good. I wonder how this battle will go. This sounds like a battle worth recording! First, let's check the battle system. The way we're going to test this is the base stats. These are the base stats that are reported on Bulbapedia. I just collected those for each Pokemon, and then I broke them into percentiles. So there's going to be 10 percentiles, and we can see across the percentiles that it's pretty balanced. There's an even proportion of each percentile represented. Now there's of course some variation, but it's not like we're seeing some sort of pattern in the base stats. And so this tells us that the battle system is probably pretty balanced. Oh. Look at all the Wailord. Next, let's look at high fidelity animations. How are we going to test this? What's a way that we would measure high fidelity animations? Well, the test that I wanted to come up with was, was the size of the Pokemon. Smaller Pokemon, you're going to be able to hide a lot of the flaws in your animation because they're so small, those flaws are going to be hard to see. But large Pokemon are going to be more difficult to hide those flaws. So we should see a difference in weight and height. That's what I'm going to do. We have the weight and height of all the Pokemon on the different Pokedexes. So let's look at what happens when we look at height. So when we look at height and split it up by decile, we do see a little bit of a negative trend. We see that the shorter Pokemon are more likely to be in the Gala region, and then as they get taller, that probability is decreasing. But then if we look at the very tallest Pokemon, we actually see they're overrepresented. We see a lot more of the very tallest at the 10th percentile. What about weight? At same story with weight, as we go from the lightest to the heaviest, we're seeing a decrease. So we're seeing these larger Pokemon are not making it into the game, except again at the very top of the spectrum. The heaviest Pokemon are making it in there. And so what I think these top deciles are telling us is that they're trying to save on the animations, but they understand that some of the larger Pokemon are ones that people really want in there. And so they're making sure they put those Pokemon in there at the expense of some of the mid-range weights. Pikachu is a popular Pokemon in Alola. Hear that, buddy? So cool! What about popularity? They said there were gonna be a lot of favorites. Well, one way we can test this is looking at a poll that was run on Reddit earlier this year. So we put a poll, over 50,000 people responded, and they were able to rank the popularity of all Pokemon, all pre-Sword and Shield Pokemon, and we can look at the decile of popularity and whether you're in the game or not. Here it does look like more popular Pokemon are being included in the game, but it's not a clear relationship. Again, we do see that that top decile, the most popular Pokemon, are making it into the game at the expense of some of the less popular Pokemon. So it does look like that was a factor that played into the game as well. 
Now I want to look at factors that were not mentioned in the official announcement, and I think we have some important information that we're gleaning from this. I'd like to introduce you to Bulbasaur, Charmander, and Squirtle. First, a big complaint when these announcements were made was that the gener first generation Pokemon are always included there. There's just way too much weight given to those first generation Pokemon. So let's look at the probability that you're included in here based on the generation you come from. This is actually the strongest result that we see out of all of them, and that is that the earlier generations are actually underrepresented relative to the later generations. You're much more likely to be in this game if you're from a later generation. And that was a surprise to me because I recognize those Pokemon. I think it must be in the marketing that more people recognize the first generation Pokemon, so they use those in the marketing, but when it comes to actually putting them in the game, they're underrepresented relative to what we would expect. It says right here that the Alolan Meowth is a dark type. <laughs> Finally, I wanted to look at type because, you know, people have their favorite types and there's a little bit of a theme of trying to stick to the region. So it might be that we see some types that are reflective of the region. So what I did is I just, I ran a statistical model. I'm not going to go into the details, but I just said, you know, if you're a certain type, what kind of bonus does that give you to being included in the game? Now in this graph, you've got this dot with the line next to it. Basically, if that line extending from the dot touches the red line, you're not having any bonus or a subtraction for that type. But if you aren't touching that red line, that means we have a significant bonus there. Most of the types don't have a bonus. The ones that do are clearly dragon, dark, fairy, ice, fighting, and then ghost. So it turns out ghost Pokemon have the largest bonus. If you are a ghost Pokemon, you're almost certainly being included in this game. This result on types actually surprised me a little bit because this is supposed to be kind of the steampunk version of Pokemon in my opinion. And so I thought you would see more steel and electric types to reflect that steampunk nature. But we're not seeing that at all. For some reason, there's a huge favorite going to ghost Pokemon, which kind of surprises me. <laughs> well, I was surprised by some of the things that we found in that analysis. You know, what other things would you be interested in investigating to figure out how Game Freak decide which Pokemon to include? One that I didn't mention in my office was Mega Evolutions. Does having a Mega Evolution affect whether you're included? And there's no effect. Some of the Mega Evolution Pokemon have been excluded, but it's not a big enough gap for us to say, yeah, they were definitely excluding Mega Evolution Pokemon. If you have suggestions on which theories I should test, go ahead and put them in the comments below. Also, go ahead and check out this video I did about going out and getting Pokemon Sword and Shield and what it teaches us about economics. You can check out my latest video here and go ahead and subscribe. We will see you next time on Market Power.